Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyQt5 tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to display hierarchical data sets with Qtree view widget. So when you have a hierarchical data model and you want to present the data visually, tree view widget is probably the best option in my opinion. In this PyQt5 tutorial video, we are going to grab a hierarchical data set using the Qtree view widget. So here's the, the example that we'll be uh, doing in this exercise. So here's my Qtree view uh, widget application. And on the right hand side, I have an Excel spreadsheet. So this Excel spreadsheet contains kind of like the data model summary uh, for the data that we'll be graphing uh, in this video. So if we just quickly take a look uh, from this uh, data model, we have three different layers. So country, states, and city. And we are graphing something using the Qtree view widget. You can think of it as presenting your data by rows and by columns. So if we're using this uh, data model on the left hand side, and we have two countries, so which is uh, reside in column, in column zero. And within the country column, we have two rows, so America and Canada. And these two countries are going to be your parent node. And under your parent node, you have different states, so for example, under America, I have California and Texas. And these two states fell under uh, column one. And this is going to be uh, your first row. And this is going to be your second row. But the row index starts with zero. So this will be uh, row index zero. And Texas will be row index one. And the same for Canada. So from Canada, I'm going to display three states under the country Canada. And these are the three states that I'll be uh, presenting uh, in my Q3 view widget. So here at Alberta, British Columbia, and Ontario. And lastly, we have the cities. So to make the video a little bit shorter, I'm not going to display the city for uh, Canada. I'll be displaying uh, just a couple cities for the America states. So under California, I have three cities, San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland. And for Texas, I have Austin, Dallas, and Houston. So this is the data model uh, that we'll be using to create this uh, tree view widget uh, using PyQt5. Now open your Python editor and create a new script. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my Python libraries. From the Qt widgets module, I'm going to import the Q application class, uh, QMain window, and Qtree view widgets. And from the Qt module, I'll import the Q standard item model and Q standard item class. And lastly, from the Qt GUI uh, module, I'll import the Q font class and the Q color class. First, let's construct our uh, PyQt application class. I'll call this class app demo. And I'll pass the QMain window class as the parent class. And I'll give my application a title. So set window title. And I'm going to just uh, name this window. So I'm going to title this, this window uh, world diagram, something like that. And for the window size, I'm going to set the window size uh, 500 by 700. And here I'm going to control my Q application instance. And I'm going to create my app demo uh, instance. And I'll name the instance demo. So I'm just going to uh, launch the application real quick, just to make sure that um, there is no any typo. But here I have, a, I have my first typo. So the class name should be Qs in the item model. Let me try again. Oh, so this should be uh, capital S. Right now, here's our uh, PyQt application window. Now let's continue. So here I'm going to create my Q tree view object. 
and I'll pass the cell reference to link the the widget to my to my app demo instance. And I'm going to hide the headers. So to hide the column, so you can use the set header hidden uh, method. And I'll set the value to two. When you want to present a data model in your uh, Q3 view widgets, you need to create a, a data model. To create a data model, we need to use the Q standard item model class. And I'm going to name this uh, model tree model. And here I'm going to create my first uh, the root node. So from the tree model object, I can use the invisible oops invisible uh, root item to create my root node. Now let me just run it just to make sure that there's no typo. Right, so here's my um, my tree view widget. So it's a little bit small. Now let me close this window. Um, actually, I'm going to remove the cell reference. And instead, I'm going to use the uh, self dot set central widget. I'm just going to just pass the tree view uh, object as my main widget that I want to display. Now, here's what the the window looks like. And inside this window, we have an empty uh, tree view widget. So let's go outside of uh, app demo class real quick. And here I'm going to create a class. I'm going to name this class standard item. I'm going to pass the Q standard item uh, class as the parent class. Basically, I want to create a template that with some default settings already established. Uh, when I can show my Q standard item instance. I'm going to have a uh, oops. I'm going to have a text parameter. That's the text that I want to display. And font size. I'll set the font size to twelve. And set bold. So whether or not you want to set the uh, the text as bold, but I'm going to set the default to false. And color. So Q color. And I'm going to set the default color to black. For the default font, uh, I'm going to use Open Sense. I'll pass the font size uh, parameter uh, for the bold font style. So I'm going to use the set bold method, and I'll pass the set bold parameter. And here I'm going to set the uh, set editable uh, property to false. I don't want anyone to modify the, the contents. And the set foreground uh, method is used to uh, apply the font color. So I'll pass the color parameter. And this is going to be the font size, not the font size, uh, font style. And lastly, we want to set the text. So we're going to use the set text method. And we'll pass the text uh, parameter. Now, these are the, the default uh, attributes and settings that I want to uh, I want to supply to my standard item uh, class. Using Q standard item class as the template, we can save uh, some typings. As well as if we need to change one of the settings, we can go directly to the uh, standard item class template, and we can just make one change, and that change will apply to all the uh, widgets that we'll be creating uh, under the app demo class. If we go back to the data model, our first layer is the country. So I'll create my countries first. So this is going to be America. And my first parameter is the text. And font size, I'm going to set the font size to 16. And I'm also going to set the font style to bold. And I'll do the same for Canada.
Under America, we have different states. We have California. Check California. I'll set the font size to 14. I also have Texas. I'll set the font size to 14 as well. To add California to America, so we'll reference the America object and we'll use the append row method to add California under America. So he will pass California object. Now I'm going to create my cities. So Oakland. And for the color, I'm going to use different uh, font color. So I'm going to set the, the red color to 155. The green and blue color, I'm going to uh, set the value to zero. And I'll make a copy of this line uh, two more times. And this one will be San Francisco. And this one will be San Jose. And again, so we want to add um, those cities under California. We'll reference California object. And we use the append row method, and we add each city uh, individually. So this one will be Oakland, San Francisco, and San Jose. Now we'll do the same for Texas. So we want to add Texas to America first. So America, append row, and we'll add Texas. And under Texas, we'll have Austin. So I'm going to just copy this line right here. And I'll make two more copies. So this one will be Austin. And Houston. And the last one will be Dallas. Now I'm going to reference the Texas object and I'll, append, I'll use the append row methods and to add each city individually. Now we're done with America. Now we need to do the same thing for Canada. So here I'm just going to type Canada and it's going to be America. Now I need to create the states for Canada. And we know uh, under Canada, we are going to create three different states. Alberta, British Columbia, and Ontario. So I'll create Alberta first. And I'll set the font size to 14. And for British Columbia, I'll just name the object as BC. And British. Columbia and this one will be Ontario if you want to add all the items to a node uh, all together we can use let me reference the Canada object first we can use the pen rows it should be pro s and we can provide a radio type such as a generator or this object. I'm going to use this object. I'll type each object name uh, individually Alberta, BC, and Ontario. And lastly, we need to add a country uh, node to the root node object. So this will be uh, America. America will go on the top and Canada will be second. Let me just double check. So here's our model and we need to provide the model. So we use the set model methods 
it will provide the model name. So tree uh, model. And I'm going to expand all the items by default. So I'll use the I'll use the expand all method. And that should be it. There's one more thing I want to do. I want to add one more functionality. So when I double click on item, I want to uh, extract the row number, the column number, as well as the text. So I'm going to create a method and I'll name this method get value. And we're going to have a, a value parameter. So from the value parameter, we can get the uh, data, which is the text. the row and the column and I want to uh, use the double click signal and to call the function and that's it now let me just double check okay now if I save and run it and here I have a typo somewhere oh this should be S and this should be S as well. Standard item. Now let me try again. All right now this time uh, everything seems working uh, successfully. Now if I double click on any of the, the item, so for example if I double click on California and that would gives me the text, the row number, and the column number. Now if I click on a different item, so let's do uh, British Columbia, and I'll return uh, British Columbia, and British Columbia is located uh, on the second row, which is going to be index 1. Let's just do one more. If I double click on Texas, and that will return the city name, dollars, the row index, and the column index. So this is everything I have to share in this video and hopefully you guys found the video useful. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.